Hello and welcome to the show. This week's Fail Race versus the Community was open to C-Class cars as we run into the first corner at Sebring Club. Sure enough, as per usual, there was a bit of a shunt. Somehow Integra ended up pointing the wrong way round and because he was fairly high up the order at the time he was spun, it caused uh, a bit of a problem for the rest of us behind him. An Elan and a Cortina were involved in that as well, and my Porsche uh, took an awful lot of aero damage. The engine was alright, but uh, I took a very heavy amount of, of aero damage at the front, and a Ford Pinto was having a look at getting past the Lotus Cortina, and then did a very spectacular roll. Bonus points for style on that one. Uh, unfortunately, it's now stuck on its side. Nothing the Cortina could do about that one. And the Pinto just took too much curb and uh, clipped the Cortina. Yeah, spectacular crash. Definitely gets crash of the evening, but um, <laughs> that's probably one of the most rolls we've had in a versus the community crash, to be honest. Uh, there was an almighty gaggle of cars that were, yeah, fighting for position. The GMC Vandura was the fastest of the lot in a straight line. I think it was ridiculously quick and was, uh, yeah, gone. Uh, uh, in front of Husky's Volvo. Husky was now coming under attack from another Integra. Uh, I'm not sure quite how much damage these cars have. If vehicles are smoking, don't necessarily trust the replay. They can be sometimes be a, a little bit laggy. Either way, the Integra uh, is now side by side with Husky as they run down the back straight. I was side by side with the Skyline at some point. There was an awful lot of um, racing going on on this opening lap, which is what we want to see. Husky was on the inside for the next corner. The Integra couldn't quite get across uh, to cover and a little bit of a touring car bump uh, going on there. The Alpha's on two wheels. Does a very good job of saving that Alpha. I thought that was going over. Um, the curbs here, pretty nasty for these cars, uh, though the Alphas are pretty notorious for rolling. We've seen, <laughs> seen them roll a few times. Husky's up the inside of the Integra for the next corner and while well, the Akira tries to hold it on the outside, can't really do very much. In front of them was, uh, was my little scrap for, I think it was fourth place um, at this point in time. I'd managed to clear the skyline uh, through the course of this lap as I round the final corner uh, I maybe ran a little bit wide, come onto the straight with a fairly sizable margin to the vehicles behind and I was sort of starting to slowly catch the Alpha in front and then comes the speed of everything else the poorly Porsche was struggling a little bit with that straight line speed and the Vandura got past me before we even reached the first corner I was very very good on the brakes and the Porsche has incredible brakes even with them I couldn't quite get back at the Vandura I got to its inside and kind of held it through the first part and then, <laughs> and then the Vandura was gone and then very that the Vandura breezed past the Alpha in front and then I had another problem it, it, it was a Volvo and an Integra were closing up rather quickly onto the back of my Porsche had to be very defensive into the next corner but as I said I had incredible rakes in the little Porsche and I could fend off Husky for now and the Integra was the Integra was the fastest of all of us in a straight well, probably not quite as fast as the Vandura um, but yeah he didn't quite have the handling the Volvo was thinking about having a cut the inside but again couldn't really do much through the corners the Porsche was a very good handling car the Alpha in front of me got a big slide and I had to be brave uh, go around the outside and I had enough grip this, this, <laughs> this Porsche was ridiculous despite the huge amounts of aero damage I had on this car I'm not even sure if I didn't have suspension and stuff still handling really rather well. Uh, Husky was making room for the uh, the rather large Volvo and I was very close to the back of the Vandura by the time we came onto the front straight and then the Vandura was gone and uh, I could keep up with it through the sort of through the, the midsection of the lap. I couldn't do anything here. Uh, Husky's Volvo was flying and sure enough he got to the inside of the Porsche. I thought I was good enough on the brakes not to have to worry. Turns out the Volvo was pretty damn good as well as we go two by twos through the first quarter. The Integra's getting past the Alpha. I held it on the outside. I have enough grip. I can keep doing that all day long with the Porsche. But now I'm in a little bit of trouble. I can't cover the inside anymore because Husky's got the inside line into this next quarter. The Integra is flying up alongside us on the outside. I go very brave under braking, try to go through the middle of the two of them. Can't quite get it done. Just get a little bit of slide at the wrong point. I've got my Porsche back on the inside for the next couple of corners, but the Volvo is good enough handling. The Volvo can stick it out around the outside, and then he's on the inside for these next tight corners. I give it a shot with the Porsche. Uh, <laughs> try to go around the outside. Can't do it. Uh, just ran out of road. And uh, yeah, despite the better handling of the Porsche, 
I couldn't quite hold it all that way uh, around the outside. And then, as we head up towards the long straight, I know I'm going to be in a bit of trouble. It carried on like this for many, many laps. Uh, I just could not find a way past the Volvo. I had to keep resorting to going around the outside, and while the Porsche was very, very good, Husky knew what he was doing when it came to defending. And, yeah, I threw absolutely everything I could at the Volvo, and I could not get past. All the meantime, I had the Integra close behind me, meaning I couldn't be sort of too brave, I couldn't be too risky, I had to be had to be wary. It's horrible uh, being stuck in the middle of a three-car battle. You want to be all-out attack, but you can't necessarily, because there's a car behind you that it can cause problems. The Alpha was doing a little bit of rallycross, despite me having a better run onto this front straight. I the Volvo's pulled out too much of a gap, Porsche's excellent, excellent under brakes, really is very good, but I can't make up that sort of distance. Husky goes defensive. I almost get caught out by an Integra that was flying along the back straight. I didn't realise he was quite that close, but uh, I have the I have the brakes and I have the handling to keep my position, but I couldn't find a way past the blue Volvo. The other Integra that had been pointing the wrong way at the start of the race was doing a pretty good recovery drive, hadn't taken too, amazingly hadn't taken too much damage in being spun in front of the entire field as he run into the first corner, goes all the way around the outside of the skyline, helped by the skyline just getting sideways uh, <laughs> at the wrong time through there, and then the Integra is passed. The Integra's were proving to be pretty damn quick cars uh, in a straight line. And this track does seem does definitely favour the cars with that little bit more straight line speed. At the front, it was an unusual battle. The gap had been closing throughout the race, and on the final lap, the Transit, yes, that's a Ford Transit, had closed up to the back of a Lotus Cortina. I don't think these two vehicles have ever been raced. <laughs> against each other. It's a ridiculous sight as they round the final corner. The Cortina, of course, is far better through the corners. The Transit has the speed in the straight line. They run down the back straight and the Transit is catching and there is nothing the Cortina can do about it. And as they come up towards the line, the Transit gets the victory on, on the line. It's pretty damn close between the pair of them. The Vandura also managed to get third position, so there were two vans on the podium. That was, I wasn't expecting to be saying that. I, I really wasn't expecting to be saying that. In the end, Husky would get fourth, I would end up fifth with the Integra, I believe, in sixth. We move on to the second race at the Sakuba circuit. A little bit better first corner here. Not normally so many incidences at, uh, at this one. I'd managed to move up a couple of positions off the start line. The Porsche started very, very quickly. Um, yeah, it was a very, very good car getting off the line, and I led the field. Apart from a Beetle, that's doing a bit of rally cross in the background, everybody got through the first couple of corners fairly well. I have a look at going around the outside of a Chevrolet. Yeah, can't quite get it done. I've got good handling, not quite that good. And in my attempt at doing that, I'd allowed a Datsun to pull up alongside. The Datsun then tries the around the outside manoeuvre underneath the Dunlop Bridge. He keeps his car there. He stays alongside. However, he's now on the outside for the next corner up towards the hairpin. And uh, yeah, I, I just force him a little bit wide. He tries to get a cutback underneath the back of my Porsche. But uh, I have the straight line speed. I have the acceleration. As we come on to the back straight, with no aero damage on my car now, the Porsche was one of the quicker vehicles in a straight line. Uh, which surprised me. It wasn't built to be that. <laughs> As we come into the final corner, I have the inside line. And the Chevy can't really do very much uh, about that. It's not, it just hasn't quite got the handling. He's then under pressure from the Datsun that gets his car on the inside. The MG's not far behind them. As they run up towards the first corner, the Chevy's stuck on the outside yet again, and the Datsun can get up the inside. The MG follows as well, and the poor, the poor Chevy has lost three places in a couple of corners. Further back, it was equally exciting, as there was a rather large gaggle of vehicles. Um, I'm not, I think this was over 14th, 13th, I don't know, those positions-ish. And um, The Aston Martin Signet gets overtake of the evening for managing to get past three cars at one corner. And um, well done to the Signet. As much as I hate the Signet, um, yeah, a very, very good manoeuvre as we run on to the back straight. The Signet isn't the fastest of vehicles in the straight line. The Beetle, I think, was the quickest of these lots. Uh, however, he wasn't that slow and could keep his car on the inside for the final corner. And there was nothing the rest of them could really do about it. So, yeah, very good overtake, that one. Me and the Datsun had had a bit of a coming, coming together and had lost the lead to the MG, which kept the lead for about half a lap before having an incredible near miss under the... That's, that's a ridiculous save. Uh, that's probably one of the furthest we've seen a car go on two wheels and managed to save. I think Husky 
might have got a Mercedes further, or somebody got a Mercedes further uh, it, at one point. But yeah, that was a long, long way on two wheels and managed to save that without going into the wall. Yeah, he lost a place. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a really rather uh, impressive save. The Chevy had had a bit of a bump from Husky and had been dropped down the field and was working his way back up, battling with a rather bright green. You'd notice um, that focus. It would probably glow in the dark, to be honest. Um, and a Lexus. The, the Chevy was not doing too bad uh, in a straight line. While my Porsche had pulled up alongside it, I never really had a huge advantage over it. And sure enough, the Chevy was fast enough to get alongside the Lexus. And he was brave enough to go around the outside. Maybe had a little bit of a bump there. But uh, still, going around the outside of that final corner is uh, pretty tricky to do. But it's not all over yet. The Lexus is right behind him as they come up towards the first corner. Lexus has a big dive. Can't quite get the car stopped. And the Chevy can get the position. The Lexus is then in trouble uh, from the Focus. But uh, the Focus is not quite close enough. And the Lexus can get away with that. Another thing I never really expected to... Uh, <laughs> to be saying is a Ford KA has, has uh, tries to overtake a Lancia 037 and on the exit of the first corner draws alongside and the drag race down this sort of wiggly straight I don't quite know what to call this corner and up towards the next hairpin the, the Ford on the outside goes right around the outside of the uh, Lancia just cuts in in front of it a little bit close on that one gets away with it and uh, the advantage of having a tiny little car at the front, and things had not exactly been safe for the Porsche. As you can see, the Datsun had kept me honest for the entirety of the race. The problem was the Datsun just couldn't really get close enough the minute we came to the straights. I had a fast enough car, I had enough acceleration, enough top speed in this Porsche to mean that the Datsun was never really a massive threat, but uh, I couldn't make a mistake in this race as the Datsun was, yeah, putting in very, very similar lap times. I actually went very wide on the final corner, just about got away with it. Uh, another lap would have been interesting to see, see what would have happened on that one. But yeah, the Porsche was performing much better at, uh, at this second race. In the end, it was Datsun in second, MG in third, uh, Mini in fourth, and Husky got to fifth. Our third and final race at the Sedota Club Circuit, I managed to make up, I think, six positions, five positions, off the start line alone before we even got to the first corner. That's how quick the Porsche was off the line. Somebody else was in a Porsche, so I decided to follow them through the first corner that would become utter carnage. Uh, the tiniest of contacts between an MX-5 and a Lancia saw the Lancia spin. Uh, the Lancia was leading the race and spun across the entire field. I believe seven cars got through that without pitting, might have been eight. Um, yeah, seven vehicles, seven or eight vehicles made it through without having to pit. That's the extent of the damage we had in this race, uh, just from one tiny, tiny collision. It really was uh, a minute tat, just enough to unsettle the Lancia. Um, yeah, it was one of the biggest, not quite as big as the Civic crash we had, but uh, certainly the second biggest uh, crash we've ever had in versus the community. I'd got away with only very minor aero damage, so my Porsche was absolutely flying yet again. Uh, breezed past an MX-5 in a straight line. The Mazda, good through the corners though, had to be a little bit wary, but uh, the minute we got into sort of any acceleration zone, the Porsche could pull away. At the front, the Toyota had taken a pretty heavy whack in the uh, the first corner accident and was having to fend off from a sprite. The happiest, in fact, this is a slightly scary looking uh, <laughs> sprite. Normally it's the happiest of looking cars. This time it's a slightly, yeah, you wouldn't want to see that car uh, in a dark alley. It's a little bit, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, these two were squabbling over the lead. The Toyota was struggling with straight line speed. Once you take sort of 40% aero damage, 50% aero damage, you really do start to lose straight line speed. It looked like for a moment they were going to go too wide through this very fast chicane, which is never a good idea trying to <laughs> trying to fit two cars through there. Sticky stuff on the inside is absolutely horrible. Uh, very easy to lose a lot of time doing that. As they still side by side, they come onto the front straight. I'd made my way up into third, and with all of the straight line speed of the Porsche, was uh, eager to try and make it three wide into the first corner. Couldn't quite get close enough. I end up out breaking myself out on the dirt, go a little bit sideways, uh, and then promptly fall off the track. Meanwhile, the Sprite was on the inside of the Toyota, and there was very little the Toyota could do about it. Although there wasn't a huge straight line speed difference between these two. The Sprites uh, in C-Class can never really have enough power um, <laughs> to make them that good in a straight line as they come over the top of the hill. The Toyota, though, gets a big slide, and the Sprite is just that little bit safer for now. The MX-5 was making his way through the field. 
uh, despite really seriously struggling in a straight line. There were quite a few cars actually that struggled with their straight line speed on this race. It is possible, I don't know what levels of damage these cars have, the replay for this one is terribly glitchy um, when looking at the telemetry. Ignore the recovery train going on, as I said lots of vehicles uh, were broken. I think there was three or four of them that had to get pushed round by somebody else as uh, yeah, the damage was quite extensive. Uh, after my little off, I had recovered back to this lead group. At some point, the Toyota had retaken uh, the lead. The, the Sprite had got a little bit out of shape through the chicane, allowing me to get past him. And then it was a, a simple matter of out-dragging the Toyota into the first corner. Despite the damage on the Toyota, it still wasn't completely straightforward. I have to go the long way around the outside. Toyota was good under braking as well. A little bit sideways on there. Uh, I Yeah, I have to brave it out the long way around, but I have that acceleration. I have that straight line speed. I also have the inside for the next corner. And by the time we get to the uphill chicane, I have got the lead. Uh, yeah, I did have uh, quite a bit of an advantage to this one, having one of the least damaged cars. I don't know, I don't think anybody actually got through that first corner without any damage at all. I know I certainly had one of the least amounts of damage uh, on my car. Further back, this was over fifth place between the other Porsche and a BMW. These guys battled for a good part of the race. Uh, the BMW gets a much, much better drive out of that corner. They're side by side, though, coming up towards the worst overtaking spot, possibly of any track uh, in the game. I can't think of a worse one at the moment. Uh, in the end, the BMW is wise and backs out of it. You try and fit two cars wide through there and somebody is going to end up on the sticky stuff normally. Uh, it's a terribly tough place to uh, overtake. I had done a silly manoeuvre at some point and dropped myself back to third after running wide at the chicane and had to, <laughs> had to work my way back up to the lead. A lag spike had also put the Toyota behind... Uh, the Toyota 2000, sorry, into into the wall, so that's why he was back there. Uh, and then I, pretty straightforward to get back into the lead with the speed of the Porsche. I can just breeze past the MX-5 in a straight line. The Sprite was a little bit quicker, but still, it was no match for the Porsche. Again, as I said, uh, aero damage. I don't know how much that was playing on the other vehicles. The Sprite had a big off at the first corner and I could sort of scamper away. The MX-5 was very, very quick. A lot of like, the other cars that were around were very quick through the corners. Had to be a little bit careful uh, having overtaken them, not to do anything silly and not to throw it away. But uh, the Porsche was just about good enough through the corners to not really have too many problems. As I said, <laughs> these guys carried on and the BMW was still looking for a way past the other Porsche. And it came as the Porsche got a big slide on the exit of the corner. Don't really want to be doing that. It was enough to get the BMW up alongside and the BM had the inside for the next quarter. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was the BMW's turn to get a slide on entry and he just couldn't turn the car. And the Porsche manages to slither his way back up the inside. Uh, a great comeback overtake, that one. A very opportunistic one. And that would be the way these two cars would finish the race yeah that was a good overtake I like <laughs> that was a I like that one and then they run through the very nasty chicane second place was to change hands uh, yet again second place changed hands quite a lot in this race the MX-5 was just struggling that little bit for straight line speed and the Sprite could put his car up the inside as they run towards the first corner not quite as simple as that though the MX-5 is very fast through the corners of course very good under braking tries to do the cutback on the exit of the corner just doesn't have the acceleration and the sprites can keep the position providing he doesn't do anything silly uh, up the top of the up the top of the hill surprise actually we didn't have any big incidences at the top of that hill this time round normally we have a few crashes there it's a horribly nasty corner um, yeah we didn't have any of them this time round anyway at the front I had a couple of laps of peace and quiet and managed to pull a fairly large gap back to the rest of the field. Uh, yeah, my Porsche was blooming fast here. It really quite well suited this track. It had more straight line speed than a lot of the cars and was still very good around the corners. So the Porsche took the win. The Sprite would take second uh, with the MX-5 in third. In the end, Husky finished well down the order. Uh, I'm not even sure where he ended up with the broken cars. Loads of people uh, having to pit in that one. So there we go. That is it for this week's Ferris vs. Community. I had a lot of fun in this one. I had loads of close racing. Um, there was quite a lot of good racing going on. Unfortunately, there was a couple of big first corner incidences which is it's the risk you run with some of these very very tight hairpins uh, for first corners which is a bit of a shame uh, we got, let's hope next week is better the next versus the community shall be held on the 24th of april so start at 7 p.m 
British summertime, we are going to be having our monthly attempt at getting Forza 5 to work. Uh, the, ne the next one is going to be on Forza 5. We are going to be running B-Class classic cars, so cars made in 1980 or earlier. They're the vehicles we're going to be running. Uh, I'm not actually sure what the leaderboard cars are on Forza 5 yet, but I'm going to say if you are likely to be a top driver, if you are a very fast driver, don't use the leaderboard cars. Use something creative. Makes much more interesting when we can say two vans made it on the podium in a lobby full of proper <laughs> proper race cars. Um, yeah, you something interesting. Be creative. Let's uh, let's have it interesting. We do pretty well actually. On the most part, we have some interesting lobbies. And uh, yeah, this week was certainly one of the most interesting. I think a bit of a surprise. I didn't expect my Porsche to be as quite as quick as it was. Um, so yeah. If you want to take part, you can go to our forums. There will be a link in the description. Uh, go to the Ferris West of the community section, and the sign-up will be in there. However, that is it for today, so thank you very much for watching, and until next time, goodbye.